I'm here today with Gary Sikic. He's the president of Logical Management Systems, a cyber and business continuity consulting expert. And I'm Lee Newbecker, the president of Enigma Forensics. We're a computer forensics firm that provides investigative assistance with matters involving litigation or otherwise investigations. And today we're gonna to be talking about the coronavirus and the global impacts. Thanks, Gary, for being on the show. Thanks, Lee, for having me back. Yeah. So, Gary, can you tell everyone what's happening right now uh, globally as it relates to the business environment in impacted nations? Well, the current state of affairs is that Asia is in <coughs> the, a situation where <coughs> the coronavirus is it continues to kind of expand. It's uh, expanding at a lesser pace in China, mm -hmm. but it's accelerated in places like South Korea and in Japan. And we're starting to see it obviously move from those Asian countries into the Middle East. Iran has a huge issue with coronavirus. Italy mm -hmm. in, uh, has another big uh, amount of people that are uh, confirmed mm -hmm. cases versus cases under observation. So there's a significant mm -hmm. amount of human impact there. The, mm -hmm. On the business side, this has disrupted a lot of businesses in just about every way you can mm -hmm. imagine. So shipping industry, tremendous disruption there. Airline industry, tremendous disruption there. A lot of flight cancellations and other things. Uh, we're seeing now sporting events, conferences, conventions, all kinds of things that are essentially uh, money makers in the in the normal sense, but also dependent on a tremendous chain of support to bring off. Uh, suddenly, mm -hmm. a, a conference is, is canceled, and now you have hotels affected. You have uh, transportation systems affected. You have all food services affected. So this kind of rippling through a mm -hmm. lot of areas is causing a very very big concern with not only businesses but governments, how do you control it and what do you do with the situation? Yeah. So here, here in Chicago, we had the Chicago uh, houseware show canceled recently. Uh, many uh, vendors were coming from other nations where there's a travel ban. Uh, and that impact certainly impacts uh, the workers at the hospital, at the workers uh, that are at the workers. hotels and whatnot oh. as they you know, is their hours get cut? Yeah, the, the, the interesting part about that is that when you begin to look at this, this the cascade and ripple effect as a result, they had on the, the news the other day a worker from McCormick Place and was talking about the cancellation of this convention. And there's 60,000 people come, and obviously there's a lot of work that's done setting up booths and mm -hmm. displays and all the other things that go along with it. And suddenly, he's out of work for a period of time uh, until the next convention comes in or maybe doesn't come in. But that ripples through to hotels, food services, restaurants, uh, your taxi cabs, your Ubers, your Lyft, your everything associated mm -hmm. with coming to a place for a conference or a convention. Yeah. So but then you also have just-in-time delivery of systems of uh, on companies systems that rely on parts. Yep. And these deliveries are now delayed because the dock workers yep. that load up the equipment and whatnot aren't able to make their, their yep. deadlines because of many of these goods are coming from China yep. where they have restrictions in place. And, and an interesting sidelight to that is that if you look at the, the shipping industry and, and the amount of material that's shipped via water transport, <clears throat> the containers those ships carry are what they call a 20,000 TEU, which is a 20-foot, 20, 22 sorry, a 22-foot equivalent unit is essentially, or 20-foot equivalent unit. Anyway, it's a, it's a size that they have. If you look at that aspect, one of the things that some companies are starting to encounter, and I think you're gonna see more and more of this, is that because of delays in shipping, suddenly the container supply is not as available because your, your container, Lee, that you ship, full of your product, is sitting out in the, uh, in the ocean waiting to dock at my port, but it can't come in because it's quarantined, and now that container is going to sit. But John's company needs a container to ship his product, can't get it because your container is the exactly. one he would, he would have normally gotten. So huge impacts in terms of ripple effects on a lot of So the aver average time that a container um, 
holds goods in terms of number of days has increased markedly. Yes. And the existence of a container is largely are based on the assumption of normal delivery, so right. the, there's a and, shortage. And if you think about this in, in another context, the amount of things in the containers, it's not just computer chips, clothing, and things like that. Roughly, and I heard a figure that, that was kind of astounding to me, but about 80% of all the containers are full with de perishable foods. Well, so you've got your you know, bananas and oranges and things that we don't necessarily get in Chicago in the wintertime because we don't grow them. Um, sitting out there, and now you've got the, the added issue of, I've got to dispose of this product because mm -hmm. it's no longer fresh. Yep. I've got to decontaminate the container. So that continues to exacerbate the time difference in terms of how these all are impacted, which gets us into looking at, from a computer security standpoint, mm -hmm. how do you, you know, these are tracked, and we, you know, we barcoding systems and whatnot. How easy is it for that to get disrupted because somebody decides it's an opportunity to hack into a network? Cer certainly when uh, systems are constrained and overworked, it, it's the likelihood of a failure or an attack compromising the system goes up. So it, it creates a real opportunity for a, a hacker to strike mm -hmm. and have a magnified impact when deliveries are already behind. Yep. So, uh, here in Chicago, we have a lot of companies that are, you know, impacted by this. We've got Boeing, we've got uh, United Airlines, um, Boeing, uh, major uh, facilities for mm -hmm. companies that, well, headquartered elsewhere, yeah. operate big hubs out of Chicago, especially the airline industry. But you've got Chicago as still kind of the shipping center for a lot of this, the country. And if you look at the Chicago area, if you will, cool. you've got then industries in Northwest Indiana, you've got industries rail. south of Chicago, huge amount of rail traffic that goes through. The uh, expressway between Indiana and Chicago, uh, 8094, is one of the heaviest traveled expressways in the world. You've got a number of other businesses that suddenly have exposure that they hadn't realized. So take for instance, the Chinese closed the casinos on Macau for two weeks. What would happen if you took the casinos in the Chicago area and closed them down for two weeks? It's not just casino workers. No. It's not just the amount of money the casino is gonna lose by not being in operation. It's the day worker, it's the, the, the uh, what would we call it, the gig gig economy, those people yep. who live paycheck to paycheck that are dependent. So suddenly they're without, how are we gonna deal with making sure that there's a, a if you will, an equilibrium or a, a safety net for those entities? Yeah. Um, one of the things we're faced with, you know, starting to see now, uh, the city of Chicago has just announced, they're just putting together a, a pandemic task force. Yeah. Um, they've had a few months, watching it unfold in China, much like the rest of the United States, and if you will, the rest of the world in some respects, why has it taken this amount of time? And what do we need to be aware of from a private sector standpoint as to what the public sector is gonna do? Sure. So from planning standpoint, this is critical. Yeah. If you're a business and you're putting together a plan and your plan suddenly conflicts with the city's plan or the, the state's plan, what happens then? So, How do you deal with that? Well, those are all great points. In, in our next segment, we'll be continue, continuing our discussion and we'll be talking a little bit more on what it's been like for businesses that are going through some of these extreme measures that are being put in place to help protect and contain the, the virus from spreading. Th thanks, Gary, for thanks, being on please. the show.